the Mercury Theater on the air. Columbia Broadcasting System welcomes you to the seventh program in the distinctive series of weekly productions featuring Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air. In addition to the coast-to-coast audience reached by the regular CBS stations, tonight's performance is being carried to our friends in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This evening, the Mercury Theater brings us The Affairs of Anatole by Arthur Schnitzler, with Orson Welles in The Part of Anatole. And here is the director, star, and producer of these broadcasts, Orson Welles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Arthur Schnitzer died in 1931, six years before Austria was finally erased off the map of Europe. He said once, speaking of a friend's death, that a man is not really dead until all those who knew him and loved him are dead too. In a much deeper sense, this is true of a city. Vienna still lives today in the music and the words of the men who knew her and loved her. Not the city of ghosts and shadows that she had become since the war, but the flashing imperial Vienna that she was at the turn of the century when young Arthur Schnitzler as a young man gave up his medical practice to become her favorite writer. The Affairs of Anatole is Schnitzler's first and most popular work. Subsequently, he wrote plays, novels, and short stories. And almost every word he wrote is about the city in which he spent the 70 years of his life. The streets of Vienna, the parks, the Viennese woods, These are the places where Schnitzler is most at home. With a few deft touches, he can conjure up the old world charm, this easygoing, pleasure-loving spirit that is so typically Viennese. One can almost feel the cobblestones in the old and narrow streets. Hear the icy wind piping around the corner of the Stefanplatz. See the exquisite carved outlines of the Stefankirche melt into the snow. A few words. We see the Prater at night, bright with gaslight. The lines of carriages outside the theaters. The lovers under the willow trees along the Danube, among the distant waltzes. Here, in this brilliant, charming city, live the men Schnitzler has created for us. And here live the women who love, and for whom love and happiness are just half understood, enchanting melodies that drift on the wind, who never think of the future or the past, who live from moment to moment untroubled by the depth of their emotions, who carelessly receive and waste the fragments of happiness that fall to their lot. From among these people, Arthur Schnitzler spins his wistful, humorous, and tragic story the Affairs of Anato.
I am Max. For better or for worse, I am Anatole's best friend. We were at school together, and then in the Hussars. I remember that winter well. It was the winter we had the golden room at Sachter's every night for supper. It was the winter it snowed so much. It was the winter Cleo de, de Mero danced for six weeks at the Bonbonnier. It was the winter Rico the Gypsy played his violin at the Bristol before he eloped with the Queen of Saxony. It was the winter I was in love twice. And Anatole seven times. Altogether it started as a very gay winter. But later that winter, something happened. Anatole began to behave very curiously. Now and then, people reported meeting him in the strangest places, in the snowy streets and beyond the ring at twilight, in little restaurants in the suburbs. Then suddenly, it was Christmas Eve in Vienna, and there were wreaths and candles in the windows. And the shops in the Kirchenstrasse were full of people buying presents for each other, and then hurrying home for dinner in the snow as the evening bells began to ring high up in the staple tower. Dear lady. Oh, dear lady. What is it? What? Oh, it's you, Anatole. What are you doing with all those parcels and no umbrella? I'm trying to find a cab. Oh, but it's snowing. That's the reason. I've been buying presents. Oh, let me carry some of them, please. Oh, it doesn't matter. I insist. You really mustn't trouble. Oh, let me be a little attentive for once in a while. Well, take this, then. Oh, but that one doesn't amount to anything. Hey, give me this. A great big one. No, I, I can manage that. I insist. Uh, very well, then. Won't you believe that I like being polite? As one only notices it when it's snowing and Christmas Eve. Warm weather for Christmas, isn't it? Uh, very. Marvelous to see you at all. Not been to call once this year. Is that what you mean? Oh, haven't you? The fact is, I've not been anywhere much. How is your husband? How are the dear children? Why ask that? You don't in the least want to know. You read me like a book. It's such very large print. I wish you knew more of it by heart. Don't say things like that. They just spring from me. Give me back my parcel. Oh, now, don't be angry, please. Please, I'll be good. Oh, there's a cab. Uh... No, it's full. Oh, dear. Do say something. Say something? <laughs> say something I'm longing to. The censorship is so strict. You can tell me your news, can't you? It's ages since we met. Uh, what are you doing now? Nothing, as usual. Nothing? Rather less than nothing. Isn't that a pity? Why say that when you don't in the least care? You shouldn't take that for granted. If I'm wasting my life, whose fault is it? Whose? Do you mind telling me, dear lady? Give me back my parcel. I didn't imply it was anyone's fault in particular. I I just wanted your valuable opinion. Idler. I'm not idling tonight. I'm as busy as you are. What with? I'm buying Christmas presents, too. Are you? If I could only find something worth buying. I've been looking at the shops for weeks. They haven't a notion among them. That's for the customer to supply. An idle person like you ought to be thinking out his presents all summer. Dear lady, how do I know in summer... Whom I want to give presents to at Christmas. So here it is. Only two hours before they light the candles in the Christmas trees. And I'm still empty-handed. Could I help? Dear lady, you're a darling. Now, now don't take the parcels away from me. Why, I had no... Then I... I may call you a darling. Will you be quiet? I'm as quiet as can be. Where shall we go? What sort of a present shall we get? Who is it for? How shall I tell you? It's for a woman, of course. 
Didn't I say you could read me like a book? What sort of a woman? Is it someone I know? Not at all. I think I know your taste. Something from the suburbs. Slim and blonde. Uh, blonde? Yes, I'll, I'll admit that much. I might have known it. I don't, don't sneer. Can she read you like a book? Heaven forbid. In the suburbs I'm loved. In society, only understood. Now, you know... I really don't know what you're talking about. Now, look. Here's a wonderful shop. This is just the place for you. Dear lady. Why, yes. Look in here. Little cases of scent in the window. One with three sorts. Uh, patchouli, jockey club, cherry blossom. I'm sure that's the very thing. You're unkind. Wait a minute. Uh, look at this window here. Brooches and things. Look at this pin here with six paste diamonds in it. Six. Oh, how sparkling. Or a bracelet with charms hung round. Or a long bead necklace. Quite savage. That ought to please in the suburbs. I'm afraid you know nothing about the suburbs. Oh, here. Quick, quick. Look here. How oh, perfectly charming. What do you think of that hat? The, the bow is too large, of course. And they put a few feathers too many. But it's adorable. That really would be a sensation in the suburbs. I think you probably underestimate the taste of the suburbs. It's so hard to be helpful. Make a suggestion yourself. You're waiting to laugh at it. I won't laugh. Tell me about it. I don't think I can. Of course you can. How long have you known her? Oh. Well? Ever so long. Don't be so difficult. Tell me all about her. There's nothing to tell. Oh, what nonsense. Where did you meet her? What's she like? What's her age? Is she short, or tall, dark, or fair? It'll only bore you. No, it won't. I've always wanted to know about that sort of person, of what they're like. My dear lady, you'll never know. Why not? As long as you really believe that women you haven't called on don't really exist at all. But I want to learn better. Please go on telling me about... Uh, about your friend. You simply must know, must you? Certainly I must. Uh, what's her name? Louise. How did you first meet? How does one meet people? In the streets? In the seaside? In a bus? Sharing an umbrella? You never mind how one meets people. How did you meet her? The girl we're finding a Christmas present for. I'm sure she's like nobody else. She is. Just as like every other girl of her sort as you are like every other woman of yours. Am I indeed? Oh, now, don't be offended. Or as I'm like every other man of my sort. What is your sort? I, madam, I'm a toy philosopher. And mine? You're a married lady. And what's she? She? She... She's just a dear little girl. Then let's hear all about you, dear little girl. It's not that she's so beautiful or so very smart. She certainly isn't so terribly clever. Never mind what she's not. Well, she has the soft charm of a spring evening. The grace of a fairy princess. And the soul of a girl who knows what love means. That sort of soul is to be found quite frequently in the suburbs, I believe. Dear lady. I'm sorry. I believe in your fairy princess. What sort of a castle does the princess live in? Can you imagine a fairy princess in anything but the smartest of drawing rooms? Thank you, I can. Because this one lives in a little dim room, very small, with painted walls. And a few Christmas numbers hanging about. And a white painted lamp on her table. You can see the sun set from the window, over the roofs, through the chimneys. And in the spring, you can almost smell the flowers in a garden across the way. Must be a sign of great happiness, looking forward to the spring. Yes. Yes, I am happy. Now then. It's getting late. You must buy her something. Something for that little room of hers. Well, she thinks it's so pretty as it is. 
Is she waiting for you now? Certainly. She's waiting. Tell me, how will she receive you? Oh. The usual way. She hears your step on the stairs, doesn't she? Sometimes. And goes to the door. Yes. Throws her arms round your neck and kisses you and says... What does she say? Oh. What one usually says in such cases. Well, for instance. I know of no particular instance. What did she say yesterday? Oh, nothing special. It sounds silly if you didn't hear the way she says it. I'll try and imagine that. Tell me the words. It's good to have you back again. It's good to... Is that it? To have you back again. That's very beautiful. You see... She means it. And she lives there, alone? Yes. Yes, she's quite alone. She has no father, no mother. Not even an aunt. And you are all the world to her. Possibly. I'm afraid I'm getting cold. Walking in the snow like this. All the cabs seem to be full. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should have kept you. Let me see you home. Yes, they'll be waiting for me at home. What about your present? Oh, never mind. Never mind. I- I'll find something. Will you? But I wanted to help you buy oh, it. Oh, no, no. You mustn't trouble. I wish I could be there when you give it to her. I wish I could see that little room and that dear little girl. She doesn't know how lucky she is. Oh, there's an empty cab now. Would you call it, please? Oh, why all this hurry all of a sudden? Please do as I say. All right. All right, dear lady. Cab! Cab! And uh, give me my parcel. May I send her something? You? Take her these flowers. Will you give her a message as well? Of course. Promise. I promise. Why shouldn't I? This is the message. Yes? Tell her. These flowers, dear little girl, are from someone who might have been as happy as you. But who hadn't the courage. <coughs> Goodbye, Anto. Goodbye. Goodbye. Cab. Cab. I say cab. Oh, cab. Anatole gets in. He gives the driver an address in the suburbs. Then he settles back on the cushions, for he has a long drive before him. And soon the streets full of Christmas shoppers are left behind. February, it was the week Christy Chef was singing at the Wintergarten, Anatole asked me to meet him for supper at Sarah's. The golden room had been reserved by an Hungarian duke with curly moustaches, so we had the red room on the second floor, with the gingerbread mirrors and the crimson plush. Anatole took a long time ordering supper that night. that, a white Moselle wine, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. And with a filet of truffes, champagne, 
Verve Tricot, 1906. Uh, Booth Pico, 1906. What do you think, Max? And at all, haven't you done ordering yet? I've told you, Max, it's a very critical occasion. Yes, uh, Pico, 1906. Yes, sir. And, uh, see now, after that, vanilla cream a la sacre. It's her favorite dessert. Vanilla cream, sir. A supper for three, sir. Uh, yes, supper for three. You can serve us as soon as the lady arrives. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Suppose she doesn't turn up after all. It's only ten. Well, quarter after. Couldn't be here yet. The ballet must have been over long ago. Well, give her time to take her makeup off and get dressed. I say, Max, should I go over and wait for her? Oh, don't spoil the girl. Ha, ha, ha. Spoil her. Ha. Spoil her. I know you behave like a brute to her. Well, that's one way of spoiling a woman. No doubt. You know, Max... I feel very solemn tonight. Solemn? Have you asked her to marry you? Worse than that. You have married her? I have not. What makes this evening so solemn, my friend, is that it is the end. What? Yes, our farewell supper. <laughs> what am I here for? You, my best and oldest friend. You are to be the undertaker to our dead love. Thank you. I shall have a very charming evening. All week I've been putting off this supper. You must have quite an appetite for this time. Oh, we've had supper every night, but I've never known how to begin the right words to use. I tell you, Max, it's nervous work. Do you expect me to prompt you? No, I expect you to stand by me, smooth things down, you know, keep up quiet, explain. Then suppose you explain first. With pleasure. She bores me. I see. And there's someone else who doesn't. Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. The other... The other... What type? Oh, no type at all, Max. Something quite new. Quite wonderful. You know, she makes me feel as I've never felt before. She... Ah, I can't describe her. She's like a Viennese waltz. Simple. Sentimental. Dreamy. A little blonde head, you know, blue eyes. Can't you see? No, well, of course you can't. And how can I explain? If I take her a bunch of violets, she receives it with a tear in the corner of her eye. Try her with a bracelet sometime. I knew you wouldn't understand in the least. I should no more think of bringing her to a place like this with people like you. Do you know where she likes to go? Well, you don't. She likes to go to little cheap, quiet places with... Flowered wallpaper and a phonograph in the corner. Yes, we've been to one every night this week. You said you had supper with me. Well, so I have. So I have two suppers every night this week. One with a girl I'm trying to win, the other with a girl I'm trying to lose. I haven't done either yet. Well, suppose you take Mimi to the little cheap restaurant and bring the new blonde here. That might do it. That shows how little you understand. Oh, such a child. If you'd seen her face when I ordered a bottle of wine. Tears in the corner of her eye. She simply wouldn't let me. What have you been drinking all week? Oh, beer after ten. Mm. Such is life. <laughs> Your life. But I've had enough of it to a man with my nice sense of honor. I'm my nice sense of honor, man. I heard you the first time. If I go on much longer with this double life, I shall lose my self-respect. I remember telling Mimi, in so many words, soon after we met, when we swore that nothing should ever part us, Mimi, dear, I said, Mimi... Mimi, whichever of us first discovers that our love is over, must tell the other, quietly and calmly. Besides swearing that nothing should ever part you. Good. If I have said it once, Max, I have said it 50 times. Mimi, I have said we are both perfectly free, I said. We shall go each our own way. Calmly, Max, and quietly. Only remember, Mimi, I said, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's deceit. Then it ought to be quite easy to... Easy, that. I... <laughs> I don't know. It comes to the point, Sam, I can't tell her. Oh, she'll cry, Max. I know she'll cry. And I can't bear that. Suppose she cries and I fall in love with her again. That wouldn't be fair to the other one. And if there's one thing you can't stand is deceit. And uh, what do I do here tonight? Well, it'd uh, be easier with you here, old man. Happy to oblige. How shall I start? Tell her she's better off without you? Is that what you want me to do? That's something of the sort. Tell her she won't be losing so much, you know. Yes, Sandra. Yeah, there are hundreds of better-looking men. 
Better looking, richer men. Handsomer, richer, and cleverer. I shouldn't exaggerate. Uh, come in. The lady, sir. A sure in. This way, for that. Oh, so here you are. Yes. Here we are. Uh, here we are. <laughs> Let me take your wrap. You're a nice one, aren't you? I looked all over the theater. Good thing you hadn't far to come, all wasn't right. it? You said you'd be there. You ought to be there. Hello, Max. Let's feed. Come in. What's he knocking for today? Well, you can serve supper now, yes. waiter. Yes. You weren't out front tonight. No, no, I wasn't well, out front. Well, you I... didn't miss much. It was awful. Anatole, I have a bit of news for you. Mm, have you, my dear? Uh, have you? Important. Mm-hmm. Yes, it um, may surprise you a bit, perhaps. Well. I have a bit of news for you, too, my dear. Oysters, madame. Of course I want oysters. You needn't stay, waiter. We will ring. Well, my dear? I think perhaps it'll surprise you, Anatole. Though I don't see why it should. And then again, perhaps it won't. It shouldn't, really. Don't tell me they've raised your salary. Don't interrupt, Max. No, why should it? I say, are these English or Belgian oysters? Uh, Belgian, Belgian. Oh, Belgian. I do like oysters. They're the only things you can go on eating and eating. Eating and eating and eating. That's what I always say. Eat, uh, well, this important news. Mm, do you remember something you said once? Oh, I say so many things. Oh, I remember you saying it. You said, Mimi? Mimi, if there's one thing I can't bear, it's deceit. Go on. Go on. Always tell each other the whole truth before it's too late. That's what you said. Yes, I, I'm... Uh, Anatole, suppose it is too late. What's that? Oh, it's all right. It isn't too late. I'm telling you in time. Just in time. Mimi, are you crazy? What's this? Will you stop staring at me and eat your oysters, Anatole, or I won't say a word. I found the oysters. Eat! If you go on with what you were saying, I don't like these jokes. Now, didn't we agree that when the time came, we wouldn't make any fuss? We'd tell each other quite calmly and quietly. Well, the time has come. You mean... Yes, I do, Anatole. This is the last time we have supper together. Would you mind explaining? All is over between is us. Is it? Admirable. Nothing admirable about it. It's true. My dear Mimi, I'd like to understand. Has someone asked you to marry him? Oh, Anatole. I wouldn't throw you over for that. Throw me over? It's no use, Anatole. I'm in love. Madly in love. Oh. <laughs> Max, Max, shut up. There's nothing to laugh at, Max. Oh, never mind him. Now, Mimi. Mimi, I think you owe me an explanation. Well, I'm giving it to you. I'm in love with somebody else. And I'm telling you straight out like you told me to. Calmly and quietly. May I inquire what sort of a low... No, stuff... no, no, my dear, don't be caught. I demand. I demand to know. Oh, do ring the bell, Max. I'm so hungry. Hungry, hungry. Such a moment. Hungry. Well, remember, old man, this will be the first supper she's had tonight. Come in. What do you want? You rang, sir? Yes, bring the next part. Where's the wine, waiter? Where's the wine? Are you asleep tonight, I waiter? I beg pardon, sir. The wine is on the table. No, no, the champagne. Very good. Sir. Now then, you will please explain. Never take a man at his word. It sounded so nice when you said it. When we feel it's coming to an end, you said, say so. And we'll each go our own way, calmly and quietly. That's what you said. For the last time. Mimi, are you going to tell me... <laughs> he calls this being calm and quiet. My dear girl, doesn't it occur to you that I have some right to... Ooh! What wonderful, wonderful oh. wine. Drink it up, drink it up. What's the hurry? You generally get it down quick enough. Oh, but it's goodbye to wine, too, Anatole. Maybe for years. Maybe forever. Oh? Oh, uh, why? No more Moselle for me. No more oysters. No more champagne. And no more filet or truth. It's all over now. Now then, who's the lucky fellow? If I told you, you wouldn't be any the wiser. Well, what sort of a chap is he? I'd come across him. What does he look like? He's a perfect picture of a man. Uh, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> There'll be no more oysters for me. Yes, he said that. No more champagne. Confound it, there must be something else to tell about him besides the fact that he can't buy you oysters and champagne. Yes, that isn't what you'd call a professor. Oh, you make me sick. 
What do I care as long as I love him? I'm going to try throwing myself away for once. I've never felt this way about anyone before. Ever. Is he a clerk, Mimi? <laughs> Is he a chimney sweep? Is he a candlestick maker? Don't you insult you him. You tell us. He's an artist. What kind of an artist? A trapeze artist? He's a fellow artist of mine. Oh, an old friend, eh? You've been seeing a lot of him, eh? <laughs> Do you think I'd be telling you if I had? I'm taking you at your word. I'm telling you about it now, before it's too late. Oh, you're in love with him? Yes. Oh! Do I know the fellow? I don't suppose you've ever noticed him. He's in the chorus, but he'll go far. When did this thing start? Tonight. That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. Tonight, I knew it was my fate. Your fate, Max. Her fate. Yes, my fate. Why not? Well, a thing like that is fate. Now, <laughs> Mimi, I want to know the whole story. I have a right to know. Now, how long has this been going on? When did it begin? When had that fellow the come yes, from? Yes, I think you really ought to tell me. So, this is all the thanks I get for doing the straight things. Give me some more champagne, Max. Haven't you had enough? What? When it's the last I'll get? For a week or so. Forever. I'm going to stick to Carl. I love Carl for himself alone. He won't bully me, the darling. Mimi. Mimi, I want the truth. How long has this thing been going on under my very nose? How long, Mimi? Tonight, indeed. Don't believe it if you don't want to. Mimi, tell the truth. You and Anatole can't part friends unless you do. And after that, I have a bit of news for you. Hmm. Yes, Mimi? Well... It began like this. Champagne, please. Here you are. Go on. Well, well, two weeks ago, he brought me a rose. A rose? Oh, so shy he was. Shy? I laughed. I couldn't help it. Why didn't you tell me? And he hung around at rehearsals and made me cross at first. And then it didn't. No, I'm sure it didn't. And then we began to have little chats. And then I began to take such a fancy to him. What did you chat about? Old things. <laughs> he got expelled from school. <laughs> and then he went into business, and that wasn't any good. And then he thought perhaps he could act. And never a word to me about all this. And then we found out that we used to live close to each other as children. <laughs> Just fancy. Most touching. Wasn't it? Well? That's all. Champagne tea. It's my fate. Can't struggle against your fate, can you? Can't struggle against... Mimi, I still haven't been told what happened tonight. What happened to She's asleep. Oh, well, wake up. I want to know what happened tonight. Mimi. Mimi. Tonight he told me he loved me. What did you say? I said I was awfully glad. And I must be straight with him, mustn't I? So it's... Goodbye to you, Anatole. I don't think I ever really liked you, Anatole. Not really. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to say that leaves me cold. Don't be mean. Would you be surprised to hear that I hope to get on very well without you for the future? Really? <laughs> yes. I am in love, too. Think of that. And have been for some time. Ask Max. I was telling him when you came in. Yes, yes I'm sure you were. Yes, she's younger and rather prettier than you. I'm sure she is. And I'd throw 670 of your sort into the sea for one of her. <laughs> you needn't laugh. Ask Max. <laughs> if I were you, I'd have thought all that up a little earlier. Oh, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. I've not cared about you since... You've been boring me till I could only stay in the room with you by sitting and thinking of her. Ditto to that. Well, lady. that's not all. Say ditto to this if you can. Do what? I could have told you all you've been telling me months ago. And days ago, I could have told you a good deal more. You mean... Yes. Yes, I do. I behave very badly to you, dear Mimi. Oh! You cared! Max, give me my things. Have me close. It only goes to show mm -hmm. it. Doesn't it? Show what? What a brute a man can be. Uh, a brute, am I? Yes, a brute. A low brute. After all, I never told you that. What? Oh, never mind. Never told me what? I never would have told you either. Only a man could be so low. The dessert. Ooh! Vanilla cream. Give me mine quick. Can you eat vanilla cream at a moment like this? Oh, yes, of course you can. It's goodbye to vanilla cream forever. No more vanilla cream. 
No more Moselle. No more champagne. No more oysters. And thank goodness no more Anatole. Oh, wait a Cigars. The biggest you have. Yes, madame. I say, what on earth is cigars? Worry. They're not for me. They're for him, the man I love. Bye. <laughs> well, there you see. It's very easy after all. listening to the CBS presentation of Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the Air in Schnitzler's The Affairs of Anatole. The program will continue in just a moment. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continue now with the performance of The Affairs of Anatole, featuring Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air. Now comes a sad day for the ladies of Vienna. It is spring. The woods of Severing are full of lovers. In the Wiener Welt, the chestnut trees are in bloom. And Archduke Louis, Ferdinand Suzars are out on their black horses in their tight silk uniforms of blue and crimson. But for the ladies of Vienna, it is a sad day. In his rooms on the Graben, the rooms they know so well, with the high molded windows and the shining floors, Anatole awakes for the last time. Did you ring, sir? Yes. Yes. Yes, Franz. Bring me some breakfast. Very good, sir. Uh, breakfast for one, sir? Yes, Franz. Uh, breakfast for one. Oh, and Franz, bring me that box of boxes that we had yesterday. The one with the letter, sir? That's right. There it is, sir. Right beside you. Oh. Oh, thank you, Franz. There's someone at the door this time of the morning. Answer it, Franz. Yes, sir. You know, I don't feel in the least like getting married, Franz. No, sir. No. Oh. Oh. Hey, dear fellow. Breakfast for two, Franz. And it's all, old fellow. Max, what are you doing here at 8 o'clock in the morning? Nearly 10. Well, what are you doing here at 10 o'clock in the morning? I say you're very jumpy. What's the matter? Yes, I am... Very jumpy. Not today. You shouldn't be jumpy. Oh? What is it you want? It's about this wedding. Oh, oh, the wedding. You yes. know your cousin Alma's one of the bridesmaids. About her bouquet. Well, what about it? I forgot to order it. I forgot to ask her what color she's wearing. What do you think? White or pink or blue or green? Certainly not green. Are you sure? You know Alma never wears green. How do I know? Don't what? shout. It's nothing to be excited about. You know what color she'll be wearing at your wedding this morning? Yes, pink or blue. Which? Who cares? Confound it. The bouquet is supposed to match. You order two. You can wear the other in your hair. Oh, that's a silly joke. I'll be making a sillier one in an hour or two. The cheerful bridegroom, I must say. What on earth have you got there? All those letters and things. Those letters and things? Are my past. Your what? My past. My dead and buried past. Yes, Max, I'm going to ask you to take care of it for me. Your past? <laughs> Better burn it, I should think. I can't do that. Why not? Well, this is how I'm true to them. To all the women. All the women I've ever loved. You know, I never forget a single one, Max. I have only to turn over these letters... 
and dead flowers and locks of hair. You, you'll have to let me come around to your place and turn them over occasionally, Max. And, you know, back they'll come to me. I'll be in love with them all again. And I'll adore them as before. Yes, the idea being that you want to use my rooms as a meeting place with your dead love. Suppose there were some magic phrase, Max, that could force them all to appear. Call them back out of the utter nothingness. Well, let's think of a phrase. What about, um, uh, uh, my only love? Yes. Yes, my only love. And then they'd all come. One from a villa in the suburbs. One from her crowded drawing room. One from her dressing room at the theater. Several from their dressing rooms at the theater. Several. One from a shop. One from the grave. One from here, one from there. <laughs> My only love. You see, Max? I'm a methodical man. Is it done alphabetically? Oh, no, there's a label for each, like the motto on a cracker. Yeah. A verse or a phrase will recall the whole thing to me. Oh, no names. Susan and Jane and Mary suggest nothing. May I look? You know, I wonder if I can still remember them all, Max. I kind of looked at some of them for years. I loved her. When she left me, I thought I should have killed her. My kisses on your neck remain, and nothing else, Matilda. But that's her name. What a name, Matilda. It uh, wasn't her real name, Max. I'd, I'd written killed her, and there aren't many rhymes to that. I always did kiss her on the neck, though. Who was she? Oh, it doesn't matter. I loved her. Once. That's all there is to... Well, stand down, Matilda. <clears throat> She does it small, anyhow. Yes, one lock of hair. No letters. Letters from Matilda? That would have inked her fingers. Don't you sometimes wish women weren't taught to write? Exit, Matilda. Poor Matilda. No, no, no. You mustn't insult her. I've... I've loved her. She's sacred. How stupid of me. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, who's next? When sad, my child, and sick of earth, my thoughts to your young man fly far. And then I laugh for all I'm worth. Oh, dear, how funny some things are. So they were. <laughs> What's inside? A photograph. She and the young man. Oh, did you know him, too? Yes, that's what's so funny. He really was quite an exceptional fool. Stand down, my child, with your exceptionally foolish <laughs> and most provoking young man. <clears throat> uh, what's this? A what? A box on the ear. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Is that how it ended? No, how it began. Ah. Oh. She always carries her curling comb. Yes, you know, she always did. Then it didn't matter what happened. I tell you, she was... Confounded pretty, that one was. There's a bit of a veil left, isn't there? Feels like that. Yeah. How did I lose you? How did you lose her? That's the point. I never knew... You know, Max, one fine day, she just wasn't. I don't know how you leave your umbrella somewhere. You don't think of it until days later. No idea where you put it down. Hmm? Very well, my lost umbrella. <clears throat> Let's see, what's this one? Sweet and dear, you were to me. Girl with roughened fingertips. Past all... Oh, that was Hilda. You remember Hilda. Now, what became of her? She married a milkman. Did she now? That's what happens. I love a girl. I'm all the world to her. And then she marries a milkman. My only love. Hello? Yes, madame. One moment, madame. Uh, France. France! One moment, madame. Who is it, France? It's a lady, sir. Well, tell her I'm out. I'm afraid she heard you, sir. Oh, all right. All right. Excuse me for a moment, madam. Yes, of course, madam. Uh, hello? Uh, oh. Yes, hello, darling. Yes. <laughs> uh, beautiful. And you? Uh, splendid. Splendid. Uh, wh what? 
What's that? Uh, breakfast. Oh, no, darling, not this morning. It's not possible. No, darling, I, I tell you, no. Uh, no, not this morning. You can't come to breakfast here this morning. Why? Uh, why? Because I've got a man here, a man with some papers. Yes, that's right, a, a whole stack of papers. What's that? I said, I said last night... Uh, forever? My only love. Uh, what? Oh, of course I meant it. Yeah. You know, every word of it, darling. <laughs> but not this morning. What's that? Coming right over? You're, you're coming right over? I tell you, you can't. Just a minute. The... My darling, I tell you... Well... Well, really, Hannah's old. Let me explain. If this is how you let begin your explain. marriage life... Don't be an ass. I'm not a moral man myself, but hang it Will on. you let me explain? Hurry up, then. It's almost 11, and your wedding's at half past 12. So it is. So it is. Well, last night I was at a party. I know that. I was there. So you were. So you were. I forgot. You were all there. You were all very lively. Yes, there was lots of champagne... Well, you drank my health and Louise's health. I drank your health and her health and wished you both happy. Oh, so you did. Happiness, yes. Thank you very much. You thanked me last night. Did I? Did I? We broke up about half past twelve, didn't we? Yes, I gave Louise a kiss. And she gave me a kiss. Well? Well, well it was snowing. After the party was over and you'd all left... Then I was all alone. All alone in the street by myself. Poor old boy. Alone in the cold and in the snow. Great big flakes. Perfectly beastly. So what did you do? So... So I thought I'd go to the ball at the opera. Oh. You see, Max, it suddenly came over me, made me perfectly wretched that... I wasn't going to be a free man anymore. Never more a jolly bachelor. My last night out. Go on. And they were in full swing at the opera, and I got there. And I watched for a bit, and I plunged in. I wanted to breathe in the sound and the scent of it all. Bathe in them for the last time. Time is getting on. What happened then? Was I drunk at Pop in laws Not a bit. Then I must have got drunk with that dancing. Mad drunk. It was my opera ball. Mine. Given by the city of Vienna to say goodbye to me forever. And then? Then... Then I met a friend. An old friend? Can't you guess? You know, Max, when I got engaged, I had to tell quite a few stories, you know. Going away for a bit and back soon, you know. There was one in particular. Ilona. Ilona. We met and sat under a palm. You're back again, she said. Yes. Yes, I said. When, she said. Not till last night. And why haven't you written? Where on earth you been? Far, far away, I said. But I'm back again. Do you still love me? I love you still. And don't I love you still, she said. We'll never be parted again, she said. Never, I said. The waiter brought champagne and we were very happy. Well, I'm blessed. And now she's coming to breakfast. <sighs> you know, looked at it in a certain light. This is pathetic. It's perfectly disgraceful. Yes, it is disgraceful. It is very pathetic, too. Who's that? So there really is a man here. <laughs> oh, it's only Mac. Only Mac? Well, why didn't you tell me? How are you, Max? And what do you think of this scoundrel? I think that's just what he is, a scoundrel. I've been crying my eyes out for him for months, and all that time he's been... Anatole, where have you been? Oh. Mm. Well, uh, places, places. <laughs> didn't he write to you either? But now I've got him safe. He doesn't get away again. Never to part. Oh, darling, give me a kiss. Oh, no, no. Really, I... Max doesn't mind, do you, Max? Oh, what a face. Look pleasant. 
Let's all have breakfast and be happy. Certainly. Uh, Lorna, I'm afraid I can't stay, and I really don't see... What uh, don't you see? Anatole ought to... What ought Anatole? Anatole, it's high time that you... That high you, time uh, for what? Uh, he ought to dress. What's the hurry? He can stay at home today. My dear, I'm afraid I can't. You can if you try. I'm uh, uh, asked out. You send a message and say you can't go. He must go. I'm uh, asked to a wedding. Oh, that doesn't matter. But it does matter. I'm... I'm what you might call the best man. Ah. Oh. And are all the bridesmaids desperately in love with you? Let's not go into that. I am, so he'd much better stay at home with me. My dear child, I must go. He really must. For a couple of hours. Oh, sit down, both of you, and let's have breakfast. There. Now, how many lumps, Max? I really ought to be going. How many lumps? You know I always take two. Cream or lemon? You know I take lemon. Lemon and two lumps of sugar. I remember. I say, I'm going. Oh, no, 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 Drink Max. Drink the tea uh... first, Max. Yes, my dear, I simply must go and change. What time is this silly wedding? Half past twelve. Are you off too? Yes. Who's the man? Uh, no one you know. Who is it? It's no secret, is it? The whole thing's a deadly secret. Uh, you see, his people... Oh, you're both uh, dear boys, but you're lying in your teeth. I beg your pardon. It doesn't matter. You go where you like, Max. Anatole stays here with me. I tell you, I, I can't. The man's my best friend. I must get him married. What do you say, Max? Should I let him go? Here, Alona, I think you'd better... Where's it to be? What do you want to know that for? Oh, I'd like to go and look on. Well, you mustn't do that. I must have a look at your bridesmaid, Anatole. Best men often marry bridesmaids, don't they? I can't have you getting married. Well, what would you do if he did? Forbid the band. Would you? No. Or I might make a scene at the church. That's vulgar. I wouldn't do that. No, no. But why don't we invent something new? Uh, for instance? Turning uh, up at the wedding dressed like a bride, too. Oh, that would be very striking. Uh, uh, very. I must go. Look here, uh, Lona. I simply must change. I huh, I shall be late. Mr. Anatole. What is it, Franz? The flowers of come, sir. What, what flowers? flowers? The flowers, sir. I'll take them. Well, let me see. It's the bouquet for his bridesmaid. Oh, orange blossoms. It's a bride's bouquet. Well, for heaven's sake, if... Yeah, my goodness, if they haven't said the wrong one. France, uh, France, uh, send back that bouquet at once. At once. Leave it in the hall. There you are. I sent France back with it. Well, I'll go myself and see that they get the right one. You're coming back? Right away, <laughs> right away. Ah, thank goodness he's gone. Darling. Darling. <laughs> oh... Be nicer than that. My only love. Uh, must you go to this silly wedding? I can't get out of it, dear. Shall I drive with you to the church? Better not, my dear. I'll see you tonight. Oh. Uh, supper at oh. the theater. Oh, oh, look at the time. France, France. Yes, sir. France, you put out my things. Your wedding things, Yes, sir. the things in which I always go to weddings. Very good, sir. After the theater, then. That's all settled. Oh, and I thought we'd have such a jolly day together. Oh, don't be childish, my dear. Jolly days have to give way to more important matters. Oh, I do love you, Anatole. Yes. Yes, I know. No. Your things are laid out in your dressing room. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, don't shut the door. Are you really going to change? I wouldn't go to a wedding like this, could I? Must you go? Uh, don't let's begin all over again. But I'll see you this evening. I said after the theater. Uh, don't be late. Late? Why should I be late? You kept me waiting an hour once. Did I? I dare say I did. Anatole. What is it? Where did you go when you were away? I told you. You didn't. I did, last night. Well, I've forgotten. I went to Bohemia. Why Bohemia? Shooting. <laughs> no, not shooting. Yes, rabbits. For three months? Every day. Why didn't you come and say goodbye to me before you went? I just thought I wouldn't. Uh, tried to give me the slip, didn't you? Oh, no, no. Oh, uh, you did try once. Yes, I tried. Uh, what's that? I, uh, said I tried. I tried hard, but it didn't come off. I should think not. It's not likely to. Ha-ha. What did you say? I said ha-ha. That's right. Mumble away in the next room. Oh, you wouldn't dare come out here and say that to my face. Ha-ha. Oh, come back here. 
Well, that's all right, my darling. You won't get rid of me in a hurry. Think not? I'm sure not. Quite sure? Quite, quite, quite sure. We'll see about that. Uh, don't you be silly. Do you think I'll ever let you go? When you can't help it. Uh, when will that be? When I get married. And when will that be, my precious? Soon, my precious. How soon? Don't shout. This time next year, I may be quite an old married man. You idiot. Suppose I get married in a month or two. Someone's simply waiting to marry you. There is at this very moment. In a month or two? Or even less. <laughs> You needn't laugh. You needn't laugh. I'll be married in a week. You needn't laugh, Ilona. I said you needn't laugh. When are you going to be married? At 12.30. What? 12.30, my dear. Oh, Anna, so don't be silly. I am perfectly serious. I'm going to be married 12.30 today. 12.30. Oh, Franz, sir. bring those flowers. Anatole. Here you are, sir. Thank you, Franz. Now then, look carefully. Look carefully, Ilona. You see orange blossoms. It's true, then. Quite, quite true. Hey, <laughs> Hey, what are you up to? You say it. You hey, what are you doing? That's my bride's bouquet. Oh, not when I'm through with it. I don't know. It's getting late. Why? Hey, what's going on here? Late is it? I'll show here, you. Here, Max, help. Help you break your... Neat. Tell. Ilona, what are you doing? That's my bouquet. You're as bad as he is. Ilona. Ilona, do be reasonable. reasonable. Look at the thing. Reasonable? You think it like this, but you wait. I'll show you. You'll see. What are you going to do now? You'll soon see. You let me go. Ilona, what are you up to? Let me go. Be reasonable. I will not. Ilona! My house! My teacup! My picture frame! Ilona! Excuse me, sir. The carriage is at the door, sir. Oh, it is, is it? Come on! Come back! Come on! Dirt, say! My hat! Come on! My hat! My only love! Shut up! I, Anatole, take thee, Louise, to be my lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. <laughs> Tonight, the Columbia Broadcasting System, through its affiliated stations coast to coast, and the network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, has brought you Orson Welles as Anatole in a dramatized version of Arthur Schnitzler's Viennese narrative, The Affairs of Anatole. The adaptation for radio was made by Orson Welles, the brilliant young star, director, and producer of these weekly broadcasts by the Mercury Theater on the Air. And here is Orson Welles to tell you about next week's broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like you to tell you about the cast tonight. Gabriel, the first of Anatole's three affairs this evening, was played by Miss Alice Frost. Mimi, she of the oysters and the champagne and the moselle and the cigars, was Miss Helen Lewis. Ilona, who tried to ruin... The wedding morning was Miss Arlene Francis. France, the servant, was Mr. William Allen. And finally, Max was Mr. Ray Collins. You've heard Mr. Ray Collins a good deal on these programs. He commenced on the stage playing 900 parts. He has joined radio and has been heard in our series of The Sea Captain, Ben Gunn, Billy Bones, Frampton Nuttall, Bert... The man with the hooded eyes in 39 steps, and goodness only knows what he'll play in The Count of Monte Cristo, which is next week's show. So tune in then, and until then, goodbye. Thanks, everybody, and good night. <laughs> Tonight, 
tonight's program, Bernard Herman conducted the orchestra, and Davidson Taylor supervised the production for Columbia. Dan Seymour speaking. We invite you to join us again next Monday evening at this same time for the eighth broadcast in this unique series featuring Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air. The play, Dumas' The Count of Monte Cristo. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>